This is chapter 23, continuing on. Uh, we've got acute respiratory distress syndrome, or ARDS. It can also be called adult respiratory distress syndrome. Um, this is characterized as respiratory distress and hypoxia within 72 hours after serious injury or surgery in a person who had previously normal lungs. Now, the main treatment is to maintain oxygen oxygenation and pulmonary perfusion, so blood flow and oxygen to the lungs, to treat the infection and to maintain cardiac output. Prognosis uh, is, well, not as great as you'd like. Mortality rate can be between 22 and 88 percent, and they usually need ICU care, uh, and these are the kids that you'll when you're in the ICU, you'll see they they have them medically sedated, so they're they're we're needing to control the ventilator, um, and we don't want them breathing and fighting the ventilator. <coughs> now, asthma. <coughs> they hate to call kids asthma unless they're over a year, so they'll call it reactive airway disease (RAD) in infants under a year. It's really the same thing. They just um, are hoping it's a one-time episode and they don't want to label the child as having asthma or being an asthmatic. This is the most common chronic disease of childhood. Uh, it's related to allergies. Um, can be triggered by allergies and it kind of goes along with allergies. There's a genetic predisposition for developing the immune immunoglobulin E mediated response to common airborne allergens. And what happens is there's heightened airway uh, reactivity, so the airway overreacts. The muscles constrict, there's some inflammation in the airway, and excess mucus secretion. Uh, so what happens is air gets trapped in the lungs. They can breathe in, but can only get the air out on forced exhalation. So on the x-ray, you'll see air trapping. The lungs will be actually larger than average. Asthma severity classifications in children five years and older. They do the step one, two, three, or four. Step one is mild intermittent asthma. So the child has an occasional asthmatic episode that they're able to control fairly easily. Step two is also mild, but it's persistent. It's not just, you know, in the fall or in the winter. Uh, step three, moderate and persistent, and then step four, severe and persistent. And uh, there's clinical classifications for each of those. This is a picture of what happens in asthma. That's a cross-section of the airway um, down at the bronchi. And you can see the top one is fairly open, and then the bottom one, it's constricted. You have muscles all along your uh, bronchi, and those constrict. You also get some swelling, some edema in there, and excess secretions. So you can see down at the bottom, how big the airway is at the top compared to how small it is at the bottom. Because it's constricted, then the cells are enlarged, that uh, internal layer, and then there's also extra secretion. And here again is another picture. You can see normal on a smaller child, it's four millimeters, and then a bigger one, it's eight millimeters but you can see the difference. You get the constriction and the, the edema and then the extra secretions. This, this is the allergy salute. Kids with allergies, they rub their noses with their hand and they'll have a white crease right across uh, along the top of their nose. Now, pathology of asthma, um, inflammation and edema, of the mucous membrane in, in the, the bronchi, the accumulation of that tenacious, which is thick secretions from the mucous glands, 
and spasm of the smooth, smooth muscle. So this is the three things we're saying. You have some inflammation in there which makes the interior diameter smaller. You have extra secretions and they're thick which makes that diameter smaller. And then you get spasm of the smooth muscle around the bronchi and, and the bronchioles and that makes it smaller. So you can see it's the three things all um, do the same, cause the same problem and just make it worse. And here's a nursing alert from your textbook. Shortness of breath with decreased air movement in the chest to the point of absent breath sounds accompanied by a sudden rise in respiratory rate. This is a bad sign, ominous sign. This is indicating ventilor, vent, ventilatory failure and imminent respiratory arrest. So if you cannot hear air movement in the chest, they are not moving air in and out. And if they're not moving air, they are not oxygenating it. The compensation, they're going to try and breathe faster for what few areas they're able to get some, some oxygenation, some gas exchange. But if you're not hearing air movement, and there's a fast respiratory rate, this is bad. This needs ICU care and probably intubated. Diagnostic evaluation of asthma. Um, first is the assessment. That you'll hear wheezing uh, on auscultation. Occasionally, if they, they're really bad wheezers, you will hear it audibly. But on auscultation, you'll hear wheezing. They'll complain of shortness of breath and they have a cough. And if you ask them to take a deep breath, often that will trigger the cough. Um, it's, uh, it's an asthmatic cough. It's got a kind of characteristic cough. Uh, we use pulmonary function tests to help in diagnosing asthma. Um, and you know that's they're looking at tidal volumes and how much air the child can move if they need you know, uh, when they're trying to. Peak expiratory flow rates, and this is something that can be done at the bedside. The pulmonary function tests, um, they need to go to the uh, pulmonary clinic. The peak flow rate, they take a breath in and blow it out, and it measures the amount of flow, the, great, the amount of air they're able to move and then allergy testing and this is where they do the desensitizing uh, to try and make the child less allergic to certain allergens that respond less. Asthma medications. Our first uh, line of medicines are our MDIs, our metered dose inhalers. These some people will call pumps, um, aerosol, or well not, not um, the same medication we put in the MDI, we can also put in a nebulizer. Now a nebulizer is when it's hooked up to the wall, the wall uh, air or oxygen, and it takes about 10 minutes usually. We mix the medicine and some saline and they inhale it. The MDI is the one where you give a pump, you can put it on a spacer, uh, which is an aero chamber. Um, I'm trying to think of what other names there are for it that kind of holds it in place there and so you don't have to coordinate squeezing the medicine and <sighs> inhaling it. Um, and that's usually two puffs about a minute apart where the nebulizer is a continuous thing. Uh, just a treatment lasts about 10 minutes. Sometimes we put these kids on continuous nebul nebulized medications for certain usually it's for a certain number of hours. We'll give them the corticosteroids and this is to bring down swelling. This can be done. There, Some inhalers have the steroids. We can give them IV steroids. We can give them oral steroids, just depending. Uh, NSAIDs we'll use, uh, which do have a mild uh, anti-inflammatory reaction and you know comfort as well. The beta ad adrenergic agents. Um, this is albuterol, metaproterenol, 
tributylene. Um, these are usually done in the MDI or the nebulization up above. Cerevent, this is a long-acting bronchodilator. Uh, medications that they've come out with in the last few years, your Acolyte or Singulaire, these are oral medications that uh, can help to stabilize uh, our asthmatics so they don't have as many spells, and then the anticholinergics, um, like such as Atrovent, and that's for relief of acute bronchospasm. Here's a picture of doing uh, the MDI using the spacer and that's with a mask. You can also do it with a mouthpiece if the child is able to breathe just through the mouth. They're not going to do nose and mouth. These, This is Advair. Um, they'll call these discs. These, rather than you squeeze it and it puffs it out in, you know, with uh, some force, these when you twist it to the current to the next dosing it's a powder and then you put it to your mouth and breathe it in so the person is the propellant rather than there being a propellant in the the medication here's uh, Aerobid um, just more these are also MDIs and Pulmacort um, pretty sure this one that you have to inhale it that it's a powder Okay, status asthmaticus. This is usually what you'll see as a diagnosis on somebody who came in with asthma. Uh, their respiratory distress continues despite therapeutic measures. So they have used their inhaler at home or they come into the ER and we give them a, a nebulized treatment and they're not improving. We'll then give them epinephrine 0.01 milliliters per kilogram sub Q and that's the maximum dose of 0.3 mLs. Uh, a lot of kids you give them that nebulizer, you give them some epi and they start breathing better and you can send them home um, and if not that's when they get admitted. Often there's a concurrent in infection and that may be what triggered the asthma not always, sometimes it's just an allergy thing, but sometimes at children's they'll often, when they admit them, use continuous continuous low-dose albuterol. So this is doing that nebulizer treatment continually. Now if you remember some of the side effects of albuterol is it elevates your heart rate, it rel elevates your blood pressure, it makes you jittery, you can't sleep, it's like drinking too much caffeine. That's exactly the way these kids are. Uh, but it helps them breathe. Breathing is more important than being jittery. If we can do continuous low dose on the floor, if it's continuous high dose, that used to be PEDS ICU only. Whether it's low dose or high dose, they have to be on a, a cardiac monitor so we can monitor what their uh, heart rate's doing. Um, I believe they're now starting to do high dose on the floor, but it can't be over a certain number of hours and then it, it has to be up in the ICU. Our goals for asthma is to avoid the exacerbations. So avoid whatever it is they're allergic to. Um, if we can't do that and they have an exacerbation, then we want to relieve the, the episode promptly. We want to relieve that bronchospasm. Remember that the muscles constrict and, and shrink down, constrict that, that airway. Uh, we want to monitor their, how they're doing with the peak flow meters, see how much air they can move in and out, and teach them self-management using their inhalers and, um, you know, if they have a disc or if activity triggers it, uh, if in, you know, bad air they can't do PE, whatever it might be. We want to teach them to know their limits and not have episodes. And that's where we'll stop.